Hello, dear ones. Tonight, we invite you to relax and settle down for a comforting tale that promises to ease your mind and soothe your soul. Picture yourselves in a cozy sanctuary where every word we share gently lulls you into a state of deep relaxation. As the serene sounds of nature play in the background, let go of all worries and prepare for a night of restful sleep. So, let the tale begin. The Legend of the Enchanted Teapot Chapter 1. The Quest Begins In the enchanted realm of Eldoria, nestled amid rolling hills and verdant forests, the village of Elderhaven thrived under the care of the elves who had made this land their home for generations. But a shadow had fallen over Elderhaven this season. The once abundant rivers had slowed to trickles, and the crops stood withered in the fields. The villagers, renowned for their harmonious relationship with nature, found themselves helpless as the earth beneath their feet grew cracked and dry. Aylwin, a young elf with a spirit as vibrant as the spring and a keen sense of duty to her people, stood overlooking her village from the highest turret of her ancestral home. The tales of old spoke of a mystical artifact, a teapot, wrought from the clouds themselves and bestowed with the power to command the weather. The Cloud Witch, a being as old as time and as capricious as the wind, held this teapot in her keep, high in the mountains where the earth touched the sky. Determined to restore balance to Eldoria, Aylwin prepared for her journey at dawn. She donned her cloak of emerald green, woven from the finest threads of spider silk and enchanted leaves, which shimmered with a protective aura. At her side she fastened a silver dagger, an heirloom of her family, imbued with ancient magic and inscribed with runes that spoke of courage and clarity. Her first obstacle lay just beyond the village, through the sprawling fields of lavender that had once been a river of purple blooms, now dulled and sparse under the unyielding sun. As Elwyn walked through the fields, the air filled with the faint fragrance of lavender, a remnant of seasons past, stirring memories of more prosperous times. The path was long and winding, skirting the edge of the whispering woods, where the trees stood tall and stoic, their leaves murmuring secrets to those who dared listen. The lavender fields were not just a passage, but a test of endurance. The sun beat down upon Aylwin, each step kicking up clouds of dust that clung to her boots. Here amidst the beauty and serenity of the fading flowers, she felt the weight of her quest pressing upon her. Yet with each step, her resolve grew stronger. Driven by the vision of her village revived, its children laughing under gentle rains, its gardens lush and bountiful once more. As the sun reached its zenith, casting short shadows upon the earth, Aylwin arrived at the edge of the whispering woods. It was said that one could traverse the forest in a day if their heart was true, but the woods were alive with magic, and paths that appeared at dawn could vanish by dusk. Aylwin paused at the threshold, taking a moment to gather her thoughts and steel her spirit for the challenges ahead. The forest greeted her with a cool shade, a stark contrast to the scorching field she had left behind. The ground was soft underfoot, 
carpeted with moss and scattered with leaves that glowed faintly underfoot, lighting her way. The trees, ancient sentinels of the forest, stood watch over her journey, their branches swaying in a silent, unseen breeze. Whispers filled the air, voices of the forest that tested the resolve of travellers with tales of wonder and woe. Elwyn listened, her heart open to the lessons of the woods. She knew that to find the Cloud Witch and reclaim the enchanted teapot, she would need more than courage. She would need the wisdom to understand the voices of the earth and the secrets they guarded. As twilight descended, painting the sky in hues of lavender and rose, Aylwin found herself at the heart of the whispering woods, where an ancient stone marked the way to the mountains. The stone, covered in moss and etched with runes, similar to those on her dagger, confirmed that she was on the right path. It spoke of a trial of spirit and a boon for the worthy. With a touch of her hand, the runes glowed softly, acknowledging her presence and blessing her journey. With the night's curtain drawing close, Elwyn set up a small camp under the canopy of a giant oak, its leaves whispering lullabies of strength and endurance. As she lay by the fire, gazing up at the stars peeking through the branches, her thoughts drifted to the challenges ahead. She knew the journey would test her in ways she could not yet foresee. Yet as the fire crackled and the forest hummed its age-old song, Aylwin felt a deep, unshakable peace. She was exactly where she needed to be, on a path that would lead not just to the salvation of her village, but to the discovery of her own strength and destiny. As the first light of dawn broke over the horizon, Elwyn rose refreshed and resolute. She doused her campfire, leaving no trace of her stay but for the warmth that lingered in the air. With a deep breath of the crisp morning air, she stepped forward, out of the whispering woods and towards the mountains, where her destiny awaited. Her journey had only just begun, and yet she felt as though she had already traversed a great distance, not just across the land, but within herself, ready to face whatever trials lay ahead with a heart full of courage and a spirit as resilient as the earth itself. Chapter 2 The Living Labyrinth Emerging from the protective embrace of the whispering woods, Aylwin found herself facing the living labyrinth. This legendary maze was renowned throughout Eldoria, not only for its ever-shifting paths, but also for being sentient, a living entity capable of thought and emotion. Created by an ancient druid to protect a sacred artifact, hidden deep within its confines. As she stood at the entrance, the air around the labyrinth seemed to pulsate with a quiet energy, as if the maze itself was assessing Aylwin's worthiness. The hedges that formed the labyrinth's walls were lush and towering, infused with deep greens that glistened with dew. Flowers of every conceivable colour bloomed in wild abundance, their fragrances mingling to create a heady, intoxicating scent that seemed to lure her deeper into the maze. Helwyn stepped forward, her senses alert to every rustle and whisper. The labyrinth was alive, and it communicated through the rustling of leaves and the soft murmuring of the wind. The path twisted and turned, sometimes leading her back to where she had started, other times opening onto small clearings where sunlight kissed the earth. Each clearing presented a trial, 
a riddle spoken by the voice of the labyrinth itself. The voice, melodic and serene, posed questions of nature, balance, and the essence of life. Elwyn, relying on the wisdom passed down through generations of her kin, answered each riddle with care. With every correct answer, the plants around her would rustle in approval, and the path would alter subtly, guiding her deeper towards the heart of the labyrinth. One riddle in particular proved challenging. What gives life and can destroy, cherished by the elf, feared by the crow? Aylwin pondered for a moment before replying, Fire. At her answer, a nearby cluster of flowers bloomed instantaneously, their petals unfurling as if applauding her wisdom. The path ahead cleared. Branches parting like curtains, inviting her further into the maze. As the sun began its descent toward the horizon, casting long shadows that danced around her, Elwyn found herself in a part of the labyrinth that seemed older, wilder. Here the plants grew taller, and the air buzzed with the magic of old, moss-covered statues, Remnants of a long-forgotten age lined the path, their faces serene yet somber, guarding the secrets of the labyrinth. It was in this ancient section that Aylwin encountered the guardian of the labyrinth, a creature made entirely of vines and leaves, its eyes glowing with a soft green light. The guardian, a protector of the labyrinth's heart, challenged Aylwin to a duel of magic and wits. The battle was intense, with Aylwin weaving between the Guardian's lashing vines, countering with spells of growth and calm. Understanding that brute force would not win this battle, Aylwin paused, reaching deep into her knowledge of the natural world. She sang a soft, lilting melody, an ancient song of harmony and peace known to all creatures of the forest. The guardian, moved by the purity of her song, ceased its attack, its body relaxing as the melody reminded it of the labyrinth's true purpose, not just to challenge, but to test the heart. With the guardian appeased, Elwyn was granted passage to the centre of the labyrinth. There, in a grove bathed in the golden light of sunset, stood the ancient druid's altar, upon which lay the scroll she sought. The scroll, bound in vines and sealed with the emblem of the ancient druidic order, pulsed with a gentle light, waiting for hands pure of heart to uncover its secrets. Aylwin approached the altar with reverence, her hands trembling slightly as she reached out to take the scroll. As her fingers brushed against the vines, they uncoiled of their own accord, the seal breaking with a sigh of released magic. Unrolling the scroll, Aylwin found a map inscribed with the pathways of the stars and the earth, leading directly to the Cloud Witch's domain. With the map in hand and the knowledge of the labyrinth's trials etched into her heart, Aylwin exited the labyrinth under the cover of night, the path behind her closing as if it had never been. She looked back once, the labyrinth seeming to whisper a farewell, its leaves rustling softly in the night wind. Filled with new understanding and determination, Aylwin continued her journey, now guided by the stars and the ancient map, each step taking her closer to the Cloud Witch and the enchanted teapot that held the salvation of her people. The trials of the living labyrinth had prepared her well, strengthening her resolve and her bond with the natural world which she would need in the challenges yet to come. Chapter 3 
Storms and Shadows Having successfully navigated the living labyrinth, Elwyn emerged with the ancient map securely in her possession, pointing her toward the towering cloud-covered peaks where the Cloud Witch resided. As she ventured closer, the terrain shifted dramatically from the verdant fields and dense forests of Eldoria to a harsher landscape dominated by jagged rocks and sparse vegetation. The air grew cooler, and the skies turned a foreboding shade of grey, hinting at the powerful magic Aelwyn was approaching. The first sign of the Cloud Witch's influence was the sudden shift in weather. Clear skies turned tumultuous as Aelwyn ascended the mountain path. Without warning, a fierce storm erupted, as if summoned by the mountains themselves. Lightning streaked across the sky, followed by the deafening roar of thunder. Rain poured down in sheets, driven by howling winds that seemed to push Aelwyn back with every step she took forward. The storm was unnatural, fueled by the witch's magic, a direct challenge to any who dared approach her sanctuary. Determined not to be deterred, Elwyn pressed on, her cloak pulled tightly around her to stave off the biting chill of the wind and rain. Her path became increasingly treacherous as the rain turned the mountain trail into a slippery slope of mud and loose stones. Every footfall had to be calculated, and every handhold tested for stability. It was a physical and mental challenge that tested Elwyn's endurance to its limits. As she climbed higher, the intensity of the storm increased. Massive gusts of wind threatened to sweep her off the mountain, and the temperature dropped, adding biting cold to the list of her adversaries. Ice began to form on the ground and on the edges of her cloak, weighing her down and making her movements sluggish. In the midst of the storm, Aelwyn encountered creatures of air and mist, spectral beings summoned by the Cloud Witch to hinder her progress. These wraiths of the wind darted around her, their forms barely visible through the sheets of rain and mist. They whispered doubts and fears, trying to sow despair in Aelwyn's heart. But armed with the resolve forged in the trials of the labyrinth and the melodies of the ancient forest, she countered their whispers with chants of courage and perseverance, her voice cutting through the howling wind like a beacon. The battle with the windwraiths was not fought with blade or arrow, but with will and words. Helwyn's incantations, passed down through generations of elfin lore, acted as shields and spears, dispelling the wraiths and clearing her path. With each dispelled wraith, the storm seemed to lose some of its fury, the wind's howl lessening and the rain lightening just enough to allow her to see the path ahead. As night approached, the peak of the mountain, shrouded in clouds and mystery, loomed before her. It was here, on this precipice between the world of earth and the domain of the skies, that the Cloud Witch's castle resided. The castle was a fortress of stone and storm, its towers piercing the sky, its gates guarded by swirling vortexes of wind and cloud. With the storm still raging around her, Aelwyn approached the gates, her every step a defiance against the tempest. As she reached the gates, they opened as if by magic, the winds ushering her into the eye of the storm where the castle awaited. Inside, the air was eerily calm, the silence a stark contrast to the chaos outside. The halls were dimly lit, 
illuminated by flashes of lightning that cast long dancing shadows along the walls. The cloud which awaited her in the highest tower, the heart of the storm, surrounded by her magical implements and the enchanted teapot, its surface swirling with a tempest of its own. The confrontation was inevitable, the culmination of Aelwyn's quest, not just for the teapot but for the very soul of her people. As Elwyn ascended the spiralling staircase to the tower, each step was heavy with anticipation. The clash of wills that awaited her would be a test of all she had learned and all she had become since leaving Elderhaven. She was no longer just an elf seeking to save her village. She was a protector, a warrior tested by the elements themselves, ready to face whatever shadows lay ahead. The storm outside might rage on, but Elwyn's resolve was as steadfast as the mountain itself, her spirit unbroken by the winds that had sought to deter her. This battle, fought in the shadows of the storm, would decide the fate of her land and her people. Chapter 4 The Confrontation at Cloud Summit Elwyn's journey through the raging storm had prepared her for this final confrontation. As she stepped into the highest tower of the Cloud Witch's castle, the air shifted, becoming heavy with a mix of anticipation and the electric charge of impending battle. Here in a room that seemed to float above the world, surrounded by tumultuous clouds and the occasional flash of lightning, the cloud which awaited, her eyes reflecting the storm outside. The cloud witch's abode was an enigma, walls lined with ancient tomes and bizarre curiosities, each object humming with its own arcane energy. The centre of the room was dominated by a large cauldron, where the enchanted teapot simmered, its contents swirling with a tempest capable of drowning or parching the world. The witch herself, a figure both fearsome and majestic, stood with an air of cold dignity, her robes fluttering with the indoor gale her magic summoned. "'Welcome, young elf!' The witch's voice echoed like thunder, yet carried a tone of respect. You have braved many perils to stand before me. State your purpose, though I suspect it is intertwined with my precious teapot. Aylwin, undeterred by the witch's formidable presence, stepped forward. I come for the teapot, not for conquest, but for the salvation of my people— your reign over the weather has brought my land to the brink of desolation. I must return the balance, she declared, her voice steady despite the storm that raged both around and within the tower. The cloud witch listened, her expression unreadable. After a moment that stretched like eternity, she responded, Many have come before you seeking to claim what is mine for purposes noble and vile. Yet, you are the first to arrive not in rage, but with reason. I will not relinquish my hold easily. Prove to me that you are worthy, and I may yet consider your plea. With those words the witch gestured, and the tempest within the teapot surged, the room filled with howling winds and driving rain, a miniature storm testing Elwyn's endurance and resolve. The young elf stood her ground, drawing on every ounce of her learned magic and inner strength. She chanted ancient incantations, her voice weaving through the tumult, creating a shield that blunted the storm's edge. As the elemental onslaught battered her magical defences, Aylwin advanced slowly towards the teapot. 
Each step was a battle against the wind, each breath a gulp of water-laden air. Yet with each stride she recited verses of peace and harmony, her words a plea to the spirits of storm and calm alike. The cloud witch watched, her interest piqued by Aylwin's resilience and her approach. As the elf neared the cauldron, the witch ceased her magical assault, the storm abating with a suddenness that left the room eerily silent. "'Why do you not strike at me as others have?' the witch inquired, a note of curiosity colouring her tone. "'I seek not to destroy but to understand and to heal.' Elwyn replied, standing now before the witch, the teapot between them. Your power over weather could rejuvenate lands and lives. Let us not hoard this gift, but share it, for the benefit of all. The witch considered Aylwin's words, her face softening. Long have I guarded this teapot, fearing its misuse but perhaps it is time for its powers to serve a greater purpose. If you will steward its strength wisely, young elf, it is yours to wield. Extending her hand, the witch passed the teapot to Aylwin. Its surface was cool to the touch, belying the immense power within. As Aylwin held it, she felt a connection to the skies and the earth a bond that promised renewal and growth. Use it well, Aylwin of Eldoria. May your lands flourish and your people thrive. Remember balance in all things, the witch advised, her voice now as gentle as a spring breeze. Grateful and aware of the responsibility now in her hands, Aylwin bowed deeply. Thank you, wise one. I will honour our agreement and strive for the balance you speak of. With the teapot secured, Aylwin departed the cloud summit, the skies clearing as if to mark the end of her arduous quest. As she descended the mountain, the landscape below began to change. Rain clouds gathered, not with the violent intent of before, but with a gentle purpose. Soon rain fell upon Eldoria, not as a torrent, but as a nurturing drizzle soaking the parched earth and coaxing life from the barren ground. Helwyn returned to her village as a hero, her mission accomplished through understanding and perseverance rather than conquest. Under her care, the enchanted teapot brought not only rain but also a deeper respect for the forces of nature among her people. Eldoria blossomed once again, its fields lush and rivers full, a testament to the harmony between their elfin magic and the elemental powers of the world. Thus the legend of Aylwin and the enchanted teapot grew, a story of courage, dialogue, and the quest for balance, inspiring not only her own generation but also those that followed to seek harmony with the world around them, respecting and wielding its powers with care and wisdom.